Now, is this mouse made by, like, Hack 5 or something? Like, this seems more like <laughs> a, a hacking tool than... No, a mouse. that's crazy. This is actually an, an exploit that has been kind of known about for a while. Most uh, we rely on developers to take certain security steps to protect their, you know, their software, and so we put a lot of trust, especially when it comes to drivers. Drivers run with system permissions, and so if you can compromise a, a driver for hardware, you now have full control over a system, and that's basically what happened with Razer. If you bought a Razer gaming mouse, really any of the Razer mice that used the the uh, software package, the Razer Synapse software, when you plug the mouse into a computer, Windows will actually reach out and download the control software for that mouse uh, automatically, which is kind of nice. You know, you don't have to provide a driver; mm -hmm. it's going to load the software, and now you can customize your DPS or whatever it is you want to adjust for your mouse. Uh, DPS isn't the right term. Uh, what are the gamer mice? They the okay. oh, it is DPS. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't game. Ah, well, <laughs> what do you know? I know. So, uh, <laughs> so when it downloads that software, though. It's running under system privileges to do the install, which is normally fine. But this installer actually prompts you to pick which directory you want to install in. And so a window comes up that lets you change the directory. And that window is running with system privileges. If you use the Browse button to browse to a directory, you can trigger a PowerShell prompt to launch in that directory. And now your PowerShell prompt is running with system privileges you are now a full administrator on that computer. And so anybody can do it. All they need is a, a regular login or even a guest account in Windows. If they can just get logged in. So they do yeah. need physical access, plug in the mouse, and when the driver loads, it takes two seconds, and pow, you're an admin. Well, that's horrible, but awesome <laughs> all at the same time. I love like bugs like this, honestly, because it's, it's seemingly, oh, I'm just plugging in a mouse, but... It goes back to the old adage of like, how do these things happen? How do people, because that's what I get all the time, right? How is it possible that someone would gain privilege into these systems? Well, you probably accidentally misconfigured something. You you put it in the wrong place. You accidentally set the wrong permissions. You forgot to do X, Y, or Z security thing. And it just takes one and somebody running around out there going, huh, did that just run a system? Oh, and it asked me where, oh, oh and the, you put two and two together and yep. you're in the system. Now, a lot of people are blaming Razer because they did get some bad press over this. The, mm -hmm. the researcher who found it reported it to Razer, and they ignored him. They never responded. He reached out multiple times, and they As didn't they answer. <laughs> and so then uh, he posted on Twitter and just, you know, just sent it. He disclosed it. Uh, they immediately got with him, and they, they worked on a fix. I, I believe the fix is already out. The updated driver doesn't do it anymore. I haven't tested that, yeah. but they, they said a fix was, was in the works. Uh, and they are paying him a bug bounty, which is nice, but they're getting some bad press. But personally... I think the fault here really lies with Microsoft. Microsoft. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. if they say, "Oh, your your mouse makes this thing break," well, that's that thing's fault. That, or it sounds like a well, feature. So Razer wrote the driver. Right. They wrote the installer, but because Windows automatically downloads it, that means they had to submit it to the Windows Hardware Labs, right? The Windows Hardware Quality Labs, mm -hmm. WHQL, uh, which has a different name now. Does it? Uh, anyhow, but you know, it's the the Windows compatibility testing that they do. So that means. Employees at Microsoft reviewed that driver, tested it out, digitally signed it to say, yes, it gets our stamp of approval, and then allowed it to be automatically deployed on the systems. When it should have been a simple check, like, hey, when we install the driver, don't allow somebody to pick a different directory. Like, that shouldn't even be an option. It should be yeah. an unattended install, and that way it installs securely, and you can't take over the session. So to, so to clarify, someone else uh, who, a malicious, you know, a company couldn't go out there and say, well, I'm going to create a driver then that does this and have the same effect because it's not going to be signed by Microsoft. So they so they, they could. They could create a driver with this exact flaw, mm -hmm. yeah. submit it to the labs, which I believe it, it costs, I think it's $40,000 just to submit. Oh, dang. And then if you're approved, there's an additional charge. So it ends up being around like $60,000 to get a driver approved. That's why vendors like NVIDIA don't get every version of their driver approved. It's like every eighth or tenth yeah. version because they don't want to pay that price, right? <laughs> So I could write a driver that's a, a perfectly on the up and up driver that has a navigation prompt like this, knowing it could be exploited. Obviously, the hardware labs aren't going to find it. So as long as I'm willing to pay forty grand, which 
I bet Vladimir Putin is, then yeah, <laughs> we can get it of all and, the Bitcoin you will get. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only hesitation is converting it to rubles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then it, you know, it gets deployed, and now you've, you've got a hardware way in. So now I just have to add a Razor mouse to my red teaming kit. Exactly. Is there a fix for this? Do they come out with a fix, like from either Microsoft or Razor or both? So the, there is actually a different navigation prompt they can use that mm. doesn't allow you to spawn a PowerShell. So do you ever get like really annoyed uh, when you go to yes. browse and... And uh, sometimes it's got the box where you can type in an address, but other times it forces you to pick folders. Yes. That's why the forced folder selection eliminates that ability to pop up PowerShell. Gotcha. Uh, or they can just take that away altogether and say, no, we install this we default We got a default location. place, yeah. It's not like it's 100 gigs in size. Like it's, normal, right? Isn't that what most applications do? Like, this is where this well, goes. Drivers. Like, yeah, right. Dri- well, that's what I mean. This is a driver. It's not yeah. like I'm downloading, you know, QuickBooks here. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, which agree. probably has its own issues. But. So I'm, I'm going to blame Microsoft on this one because they should have caught it and Razor paid mm. for I was that. I going to say, you, you pay 60 uh-huh. grand, you expect that, yeah. that yeah. they're going to do so that quality control. Razor made the mistake. They should have known better. But when you pay to have it checked, seems like it should have been checked. Yeah. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.